Today, I'm going to be going over exporting textures from Elden Ring out of Smithbox. So first thing we're going to do is you can see that I have Renala up right now and you can see that her textures are loaded. To do this, we want to go up to settings and then go to viewport and then enable model texturing. Now, this is a optional. You don't need to do this. It's just so you can see the textures on the model in the viewport. Okay, so what we're actually gonna do though is go over to the texture viewer. All right, now this is similar to the model editor. We got our asset characters, parts, particles, and so on. So we're gonna go into characters. Now we're gonna use Blide right now so I can go over what the textures are. However, we're not gonna be using Blide in this example because for some reason, Bly doesn't export with the UVs, and I'm not sure what's going on if it's on my side. So if anyone also having a problem, please let me know in the comments and uh, I'll see if I can figure it out. But for now, what we're gonna do is just go quickly over uh, what the texture naming is. So here we got this, uh, the C2010, that's basically the character's mo uh, model number. All right, so AM stands for arm. A actually stands for albedo, which is color. So at first glance, you'd think it'd be the alpha, but it's not. So this is the base color map. So then we got arm, and then we got N for normals. And then again, this is the color map. This is for the body. So BD is body. And then we got our fur color and head color and normal. Now, this one, I'm not sure uh, what the V is for. Um, so if anyone does know, please let me know in the comments, but we're not gonna be worrying about this today anyway. So now we got LG, that's our leg, and WP, that's our weapon. So for this example, I'm actually gonna be using one of my favorite weapons, which is most likely one of yours too, it's the Rivers of Blood. So we're gonna go in here. Now there is a search box. However, it's not very user friendly. So I can't just go ahead and type in river and uh, expect to find what I'm looking for. Unfortunately, what it actually is searching is basically just the this part of the file name instead of the actual description. So um, we're just gonna type in WP for weapon. And now we're just gonna kind of scan through this. And I already know what number we're at. So it's actually 0554, I believe. There we are, rivers of blood. Okay, so this is pretty simple. We only have three textures associated with it. So we got our color, our normal, and then this one is our metal. So this is basically more or less kind of like an alpha. It's a black and white, really. So what we're going to do is go over here and um, we're going to click on export texture. And then down here is our file type. These file types, uh, it basically depends on what you're going to be doing with the textures. But for this, I'm just gonna choose PNG, and then make sure that it's, uh, you got your folder selected that you wanna export to. All right, and then hit apply, and yes, and it's exported. Okay, so the next one we're gonna get is the normal, and we're just gonna do the same thing, leave it as a PNG. And that is exported now for the metallic. So we're gonna do the same thing, PNG, hit apply. Okay, so I did this on purpose so you can see this error uh, that you will most likely get if you try to select a different file type for the metallic. For some reason, this particular texture throws an error and uh, crashes Smithbox. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, Close out of that. So for the metallic file, what we're gonna do 
is we're actually going to export it as a DDS file. Now this is a standard um, file type for, for game engines. And uh, we will go ahead and make sure that's selected right. And then we're going to hit apply. And as you can see, it exported right. So I'm going to do all of them as DDS. Okay, so now we've got all of our files exported. We're gonna jump into Blender and then we're gonna load up our model, throw some textures on it and do a quick render and see what we get. All right, so we're in Blender. Let's go ahead and import our Rivers of Blood. And just go to wherever your project folder is and that is not where mine is. Actually, Okay, yeah, there we go. And one thing I failed to uh, mention in my previous video was uh, when importing into Blender, the bones seem to be uh, not importing correctly. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to get rid of this bone. And uh, we're going to unparent. All right, so we're just going to hit parent and then clear parent and keep transformation. And then we'll just delete the bone and delete that. Okay. So, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and work on our textures. And then next, we'll set up a scene to render the rivers of blood out. All right, so what we want to do is go over to our shading tab. And as you can see, we've got missing texture on here. In our node editor, I want to go ahead and adjust some of this. So if you're not familiar with the Blender node editor, it's not terribly complicated. There is a lot of moving parts, but this particular example is going to be pretty simple. So first thing we got here is our image node, and this is uh, connected to our base color. And then we got a normal map node, and that's connected to our normal map slot. And then this is the shader is actually connected to our material output surface. So first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and add our texture. And that did not come in right. So let's do this. We're gonna go ahead and change that to the PNG. And there we go. So that's it, you're done. Well, not quite. Um, this is just the color. So it's a little bland, but if that's all you want, then that's all you need to do. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is add a few more things. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Two more times. All right. So we want our, and this one's going to be for our normal. So we're going to go ahead and select our normal map. And then just plug that into the color. And now we can see that it has uh, got a lot more detail. Okay. And it's a little shiny. Not a problem. All right, so now this one is gonna be for our metallic map. Now for this one, what we wanna do is add another node and we're gonna go ahead and add a lamp. Okay, so what this is actually gonna do for us is give us a little bit of control on um, how the metallic map operates so we're going to go ahead and add our map and then we're going to plug this into value and then result into metallic all right so now we can see it looking a little little weird so now what we want to do is we're going to change this to say one and two Okay, that's looking a little better. All right, 
and I'm going to change this to object. There we go. So that's looking looking a little better. And let's uh, change our strength to let's get in here. Alright, so we are at one. Let's uh let's see what five looks like. Not not really liking that too much. Let's see um three. Well, three is a little better. All right, and um, let's see what else we got. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the... It's not looking terrible. I think we can go with that. Um, a lot of this is just kind of just playing around and getting getting uh, the look that you want. Um, but for this example, I think... I think that's good. We'll go with that. All right. So just to go over this real quick, we got our color, we got our metallic, and as you can see, it's it's a black and white image. Um, it's you know more or less like an alpha, and then we got our normal map. Okay, normal maps plugged into this normal map node into our normal map slot in the shader, and we got our metallic into our clamp. And we set our value on the min to one, max to two. You can play around with these. Like I said, it's not a real hard and fast. It's kind of whatever looks good and looks realistic to you. Okay. And then, so that is it for the actual importing of the textures. We're going to go to our layout tab. And now we're going to go ahead and set up a little scene to, to render a couple shots. So first, what I want to do is I want to just go into our front and then I want to move, actually I'm going to rotate on the X. Oh, no, uh, Y. So I'll rotate that up, that's fine. And then we're going to go ahead and move it, G and Z and G, X. So we'll kind of get it in the middle. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and add a mesh. I'm going to do a plane. And uh, what do we got? That's two meters. We'll say, yeah, we don't need it that big. Do three. All right. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go into. Uh, edge mode and we're going to take that edge and we're going to extrude it up okay now we're going to take that edge and then we're going to bevel control b and then we're going to give it one two three four five and we'll say six and kind of bring that up a little bit so i'm just making a basic backdrop All right, and then we want to go and do shade smooth. So that's smoothed out. Okay. So now we want to add a camera and a light. Do and do area light. G Z. All right, and then we're gonna rotate our. And what do we want on Y? No, X. All right, G. Y. We'll move that. Okay. So I'm not doing anything fancy, no three point lighting or anything. Just something simple. All right. So now we're gonna add a camera. Shift A, camera, and G. Get that out here. 
And then we're going to go ahead and go into our camera zero. And we want to change that to camera to viewport. And we're going to kind of, there we are. Okay. So now we got our uh, camera framed up. We're going to switch into our viewport shading. And that doesn't look very good. Let me get rid of that stupid thing. Selection box. Okay. So we want to go into our light. And we're at 10 watt. Let's bump that up to 100. Okay. So that's quite a bit brighter. And I want to go into our render. I want to change that to cycles. There we go. All right, so that's looking better. Right, I'm going to adjust the, the light position. There we go. All right, and we're going to go ahead and kind of move that back around. And let's do this. I want to rotate. Okay, so we'll kind of give it a 45 degree angle. G, X, move it over here. All right. Let's go into, I'll we'll make that a little bit bigger. All right, so that's not looking too bad. It's still a little dark. Not getting our handle very good, but again, I'm only doing this for a demo. Um, not trying to get like some super awesome render out of it. All right, so I want to let me adjust that light a little bit more. Let's say 150. That might be a little too much. 120. Okay, so let's do a uh, quick render. Okay, so it is rendered and it doesn't look bad. Let's uh, let's do this real quick. Let's. Go into our camera. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a render. Okay, so that doesn't look so good. We're gonna go ahead and uh, close that. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix the, the render, seeing that if I render this, see that the handle's really dark, everything's kind of like high contrast and we don't want that. So let's take a look at our shader. All right, so let's change this back to tangent space, which is what it was originally on, and it gave us this real bright, glossy look. So now what we want to do is we'll just go ahead and do it. Okay, so that's looking better. We'll leave it there, and um, that's why I was saying that a lot of this is just kind of playing around and uh, just experimenting a little bit. So we will do a... Re, uh, readjust this. As you can see, that that looks really bright and washed out. Get in close here on the handle. We'll get a kind of a kind of a hero shot. See what that looks like. Okay, so there we go. That's not looking too bad. A little bit more adjustment, some better uh, light setup, and it'd look really good. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.